All the news that the 1% media won't publish. Welcome to The Occupied Sun for the Occupy News Network. I'm Anne Narki. These are just some of the top current headlines which have been underreported, censored or distorted by the 1% media. Five members of the Liverpool branch of Love Activists have been sentenced to ten weeks in prison. The Love Activists had moved into a derelict bank in the middle of April to set up a support centre for Liverpool's homeless people, including a place to sleep, an advice centre and a street kitchen. They were evicted on the 12th of May and the homeless activists arrested. Over £100,000 was spent policing the protest and arresting the Love Activists. Almost all of this budget was used to pay overtime to officers who created a heavy police presence, refusing to allow supplies to be taken into the building. More on this story after the headlines. Runnymede Eco Village, formed by the group Diggers 2012, lost their High Court appeal last week. Since 2011, the community of eco warriors have been occupying forest land near the historic site where Magna Carta was signed. An urgent shout out for eviction resistance was issued immediately, however, bailiffs arrived unannounced in the early hours of Wednesday morning and destroyed dozens of homes with chainsaws and sledgehammers. At least three arrests were made, and one woman lost half her finger trying to escape the violent eviction. At least 40 individuals, including families with young children, have been left destitute. They can destroy the houses, but they can't break my spirit. No papers were served, and the villagers are questioning the legality of the eviction. The independent breakaway nation of Sweet Stopia is defending its borders while a small army of mercenaries, private security and bailiffs lay siege to the estate. Sweet Stopia developed out of the Sweet's Way estate protests over the last six months. The Sweet Stopians have lost all of their court battles and already suffered brutal, violent incursions by UK bailiffs. In spite of the 1%'s violence, Sweetstopia is continuing creative, playful eviction resistance. Grow Heathrow, who have occupied land in protest at expansion of Heathrow Airport since 2010, were given a stay of execution yesterday as the court was adjourned until summer 2016. The Shadow Chancellor, John McDonnell, arrived at Uxbridge County Court this morning to show his continued support for the anti-third runway occupation. Mr Macdonald submitted a statement to the court which read Members of Grow Heathrow have become part of the local community, making a valuable contribution to the life of the local villages. Grow Heathrow is part of a fierce community resistance to Heathrow's expansion that won't go away easily for any government. I commend this group to you and hope that its members will be able to continue to remain on this site and part of our community. While the unelectable socialist Jeremy Corbyn was winning the Labour leadership election, causing many one percenters to shit their pants, activists around the country have been in overdrive fighting for social, economic and environmental justice. We congratulate Comrade Corbyn and his supporters and encourage everybody to join the wave of non-violent civil disobedience, occupations and street activism currently taking place all over the UK. Amongst the media shitstorm of Corbyn's election as Labour leader is the unfolding tragedy of the worst refugee crisis since World War II, with millions of people displaced by climate change and the 1%'s war machine. Corbyn's first action as leader of the opposition was to join over 100,000 demonstrators who marched on Parliament from all over the country in solidarity with migrants and refugees. Corbyn had the following message for UK Gov PLC. Open your hearts and open your minds and open your attitude towards supporting people who are desperate, who need somewhere safe to live, want to contribute to our society and are human beings just like all of us. Together in peace, together in justice, together in humanity. That surely must be our way forward. While Corbyn was delivering his speech, violent clashes erupted in Dover as a small number of neo-Nazis marched to close the border to war-torn refugees. Anti-fascist demonstrators linked arms to form a solid wall blocking the march. This was the third fascist demo Dover has suffered this year. 
The world's largest arms fair, DSEI, ended today. A diverse coalition of campaign groups occupied and blockaded the entrance to the Excel Center 24 hours a day since Monday the 7th of September. There have been at least 14 arrests. DSEI bears significant responsibility for the ongoing refugee crisis, selling weapons to countries on the UK's own list of human rights abusers, yet receiving a £700 million annual taxpayer subsidy from UK Gov PLC. Last Friday, fashion designer Vivian Westwood and a battalion of 50 anti-fracking nanas drove a tank to far-right Prime Minister David Cameron's home to declare war on fracking. UK Gov PLC have announced they plan to award rights to explore for oil and gas on 27 new sites, spanning 1,000 square miles of northern England and the East Midlands as they seek to poison the planet with their insatiable lust for short-term profit. National parks, protected wildlife habitats and historic city centres are among 6,000 square miles of the country earmarked for potential fracking, doubling the area open to oil and gas drilling. It's just so irresponsible. The people are not only criminal, they're actually idiots, you know. Rupert Murdoch has been very busy this week, having bought the previously not-for-profit National Geographic, turning it into a for-profit. Why a famous climate change denier would want to buy a 127-year-old publication famous for reporting scientific information on climate change, we can only wonder. While using his media empire to wage war on Jeremy Corbyn, Murdoch is also campaigning for war with Syria. By pure coincidence, Genie Energy, a company partly owned by Rupert Murdoch, has been granted rights to explore for oil in the Golan Heights of Syria. The Golan Heights has been occupied by the Israeli military since the Six-Day War in 1981.